This is All India Radio. In the program Spotlight, now we bring you a discussion on technological developments in railways for capacity enhancement. The participants are Shekhar Iyer, political analyst, and Chetan Chauhan, journalist. Today, the Prime Minister inaugurating driverless metro in Delhi. This is the first metro which is driverless uh, in the country, and it's a huge leap forward for totally automated public transport system. Shekhar, what do you have to say about the Prime Minister's uh, inauguration of a driverless metro today? This is a very important technological, I would say, marvel. The sense that uh, this driverless train is a concept that is catching up. It's not just about you know the trains running without drivers, but it is the quantum jump in technology that is provided in terms of safety, in terms of communication, gadgetry that is involved in and signalling particularly. And this has in turn spawned a number of indigenous companies and firms to. experiment with whatever is available indigenously as well as with global technology and this is going to see so that the extra manpower which is normally deployed as you know loco pilots they can be utilized in further technology upgradation for handling much higher capacity trains elsewhere prime minister today also spoke on the urbanization that how in the last 15 20 years the urbanization is increasing and urbanization should not be seen as a challenge it is a opportunity for the government to build up infrastructure he also mentioned about delhi meerut rapid metro system which is being uh, coming up in the short while in the next few years which will reduce travel time between delhi and meerut shekhar how does urbanization is a huge concept because uh, if you see in the last two decades if you see the census data at least the population increase in the urban areas is much higher than in rural areas so it is presumed that in the next 50 years india's population will be 50% in rural areas 50% in urban areas and the urban cities will get more congested so on the urbanization what how do you think that the government is doing enough or they have done enough for to deal with the growing urbanization chetan you know we are facing this problem of urbanization which is uh, here to stay because it's no longer possible that the reversal can happen if you look at the guiding principle which is engaging the government in this facing the challenge of urbanization is to make to enhance the quality of feeling of ease of living so for ease of living you need to have better quality infrastructure better application of technology and lesser interface between man and uh, man because the more the technology comes into the picture the easier it becomes because today also marked the launch of what is called the national mobility card you have a single card that can serve it can be a debit card credit card and as well as your card use uh, swap to get into the trains or even buses so this is a good example of you know ease of living see the urbanization requires that when you have populations on the move on a day to day basis so there has to be faster travel quicker travel and comfortable travel and a comfortable communication that is possible only if you are able to build better infrastructure and that better infrastructure has to take into account faster mobility as well as save time because the creation of better infrastructure is i would consider a stimulus for economic growth because so many things are engaged in in the construction sector when our economy is picking up with this kind of investment to create a better infrastructure from the last mile connectivity to this mass rapid transport or high speed corridors now this is a broad concept which has been adopted by big world cities and the prime minister desires that such things are also implemented in india of course there are huge problems in our country the lack availability being one and the second thing is also capital the capital is also a big challenge that is why you have seen the government come with several private public uh, partnerships and also uh, allowing even for 100% fdi which involves high technology transfer particularly relating to the transport sector Shekhar, we see the growth of metro as the prime minister highlighted that in 2015 only five cities uh, big cities in india had a metro train by 2025 uh, the government has promised that it will increase to minimum 25 uh, cities and the number of kilometers covered by metro has increased by almost uh, seven times in the last 6 uh, 7 years the number of passengers have also increased but he also spoke about the different models of metro that needed to be adopted the so far we have seen a one metro model which is a delhi metro model which has been replicated in chennai in jaipur in ahmedabad bombay hyderabad most of the big cities so there are different models of train systems which have to synergize with each other as the prime minister highlighted in the speech so that you have a seamless public transport system which can help so how the government plans to improve the metro network across the country in the next maybe decade or so 
So as you mentioned that uh, by year 2025, we are going to see metro operating in 25 cities. Already we know that a number of city municipalities, state governments have come up with proposals which have been getting expedite clearance. And also, you mentioned about, you know, how the different cities have different requirements and all of them need not go in for such a massive investment like, say, Delhi Metro or Mumbai Metro or Chennai Metro or even Bangalore Metro. And also, even the idea of monorail, which is uh, operating in a very small scale in Mumbai, it is also being thought of in uh, other cities. Because these are, as you mentioned, that probably they do not have such kind of passenger traffic throughout the day. So they can have these light uh, cars, you know, which can run on monorail where the investment is not as huge as this is. Even let us take the case of Delhi Metro. The fact that, you know, the metro was thought of in Delhi very late itself saw, you know, huge cost being involved in having it being implemented in Delhi. But good, it started over uh, more than uh, two decades ago. Today, the people of Delhi are beneficiaries of a rapid system, which covers almost more than 500, 600 kilometers across. And there are several phases that are being implemented. The success of the Delhi model has made several city corporations to think of having similar models. They may not have such a large network like the Delhi Metro. Like, for instance, in Bombay. Bombay always had service connecting the north I and mean, south Bombay with the north Bombay. Now, the new metros are in the direction of east-west and uh, they have also have a monorail to supplement it. So, there need not be a one kind of metro service to think of. There can be several because the Prime Minister also spoke about, you know, water metros where there are islands or population living in islands or in a group of islands. Probably, they may need what is called water metro. Probably, number of quick service um, passenger boats operating as, like metros, you know, frequently connecting different islands. So basically what we are seeing is that, you see, the demands of the public transport will remain the same. But the medium is changing. The Prime Minister also, you know, drew attention to the fact that we are committed to climate goals, which is to have a zero emission, you know, to the extent that is possible, particularly from the transport sector. So that would mean that we adopt new technology, we go for more electric vehicles, we go for more battery operated uh, vehicles and of course the electric metros are one of the biggest contribution to controlling pollution. Shekhar, one uh, thing which the PM highlighted, I think is extremely important about making India a component of metro because as you spoke, the investment in metro is huge and when the Delhi metro came, the entire investment is was from the Japanese companies, then the Korean companies came. But now in the last few years, we have seen that some of the public sector undertakings, even the private sector are building coaches and other metro components. So he spoke about the Make in India, which will reduce the investment. Foreign exchange will also be safe and people in India will also get employment. So how do you think that uh, the metro expansion can be part of Make in India and can help us in improving our manufacturing? See, right now we already have what is called the standardization of the rolling stock, as the Prime Minister pointed out. You also mentioned that, you know, the cost of every coach down to 8 crores from what it was uh, 12 crores. So the technology is available. There are a number of local manufacturers. You have a state manufacturer also. And I think uh, we have to look at uh, what the few days ago when the government released what is called the draft uh, national rail plan. See, that plan had spoken of uh, how to plan the infrastructural capacity enhancement. The metro development can also be seen as part of this uh, national rail plan, which is uh, to create capacity ahead of the demand. So what has happened is by the time the demand is assessed, then the capacity is created. And once the capacity are created, the demand outgrows the capacity. So the idea is, which is this national rail plan is to look at the capacity requirements, say, for by the time we reach 2030, and then cater to the create such a capacity that you are able to meet the demand up to, say, 20 years from 2030, that is 2050. And then look at ways of go for this Make in India approach where you cut down the net carbon emission by 2030 and also because one element of this national rail plan is to you know shift a lot of freight traffic from the road to the rail and also passenger traffic. So with that kind of focus, connecting some cities which are close by so that the mass transport is the preferred choice in the years to come rather than individual transport which got overemphasized because of a lack of a modernized uh, mass transit system. Shekhar, today also the Prime Minister flagged off the 100th Kisan Rail from uh, Sangoli in Maharashtra to Shalimar in uh, West Bengal. This uh, multi-community train carries uh, vegetables, fruit from one place to another place at a very extremely high speed. So how do you see 
the flagging of the 100 kisan rail today well it's a very very symbolic moment i would say because i just now spoke about rail plan because the rail plan itself is to see that the freight carried by railways which is presently at 27% to take it up to 45% by 2030 so that is one aspect where you know you are encouraging more and more produce and products to be carried by rail freight but at the same time this also increasing productivity in agriculture doubling the income of farmers this kind of connectivity shows that if a farmer is going to be free to be able to sell anywhere he equally needs a network of services particularly transport services that can take his produce direct from the farm to the markets which may be 1000 kilometers away you already have milk trains you know cross crossing the country from the milk surplus states to milk deficit states so similarly the vegetables fruits and other produces apart from cereals and our pulses you need the uh, investment that guarantees the farmer cheaper alternative form of transport compared to trucks same time the farmer is no longer worried about you know how his product will reach the market because at a time when we are looking at alternatives platforms other than the local mandis which government has been repeatedly emphasizing this kind of kisan trains also send across a message that the government is serious in enabling the farmer difficult to reach for logistics reasons government is giving a signal that it's not only for people even for farmers we are providing them rail infrastructure of a faster reach of their produce because from sangli in maharashtra till in west bengal train bridge will reach in one day otherwise normally in truck it used to come reach there in three or four days now your produce can reach within one day shekhar i think is also interesting in the context of the farmer protest what the government is trying to deliver the message that the free farm laws allows the farmers a better access to all the markets in the country and will help them to improve their income government has been thinking of you know increasing the infrastructure facilities that includes kisan trains that includes uh, you know speeding up of freight trains as part of that overall plan because the idea is you need more intensive agriculture that requires capital because that is behind the plan that was announced as part of the uh, atmanirbhar campaign which was announced in august where you know you are going to have a lot of investment in In terms of you know, creating cold storage chains, also creating new platforms where farmers can sell, and also this kind of infrastructure enhancement, which ensures that the farmer is able to get a better price. The logistical costs that are involved, you know, in storing the produce, in transporting the produce, these are all taken care of by getting more and more private-public partnership. because that requires a investment that is essentially the idea because if you have to double farmers income the farmer has to produce more than what he is producing today and he has to produce differently than what he is producing today and move away from crop to those crop that can give him a better price instead of just depending on the mandis just for the sake of the msp the farmer keeps on producing a particular crop just because it is can be sold under msp rather than looking out at the market which will be in tune with the required demand and And right now with the kind of incentives being given by the government to enable more and more firms and farmer producer organizations when they see this kind of kisan trains actually rolling they get the confidence the sense that the other projects which are in the pipeline they are also underway and that all that has been planned as part of the big agriculture boost that the country needs is actually happening on the ground rather than just being thought of as a some kind of a long term ambition because some of the projects are going to take time some of the things that can be done immediately the speed of the freight cars that can be done immediately which is being done and some dedicated freight corridors see that is also an important element because as and as uh, you know there is more expansion of tracks and then there are dedicated trucks to carry freight particularly agriculture produce so you can see that the farm laws are just one aspect or one dimension of what is being planned as giving boost to and strength to agriculture over which more than 60 65% of our population are dependent whereas in terms of income levels that have not been so encouraging so far the government in the last few years have focused highly on improving the urban infrastructure as you said the ease of living is high on the government's agenda Thanks a lot. Thank you. You were listening to a discussion on technological developments in railways for capacity enhancement. The participants were Shekhar Iyer, political analyst, and Chetan Chauhan, journalist. This program was produced and presented by the News Services Division of All India Radio. You can listen to it on our mobile app, News on AIR. This program is also available on our website, newsonair.com. 
You may email European in about this program at AIRNSDtalks at gmail.com.